What up? What up? Yeah, baby, we're killing it. Yes, you're getting another stream today. Because I bust ass at what I do. That's why. I bust ass writing books, making videos, doing streams, doing debates, doing talks. This is the 26th and 27th book on globalism from the top globalists. Who else has done that for you? Who else has given you 27 books from the globalists themselves, from the top? Today we're going to be doing UNESCO, his essay, Mr. Julian Huxley. And then we're going to do his little book on living in a revolution. Because as you've heard me discuss, we're living in the final revolution, Luciferian revolution. But I want to again stress, uh, who is taking you through 27 of these books, book by book by book by book by book in the last two years, not just doing that, also debating everybody who comes along, who's not completely insane, who's not batshit crazy, who's also given you two books, who's also created co-created a TV show. I'm not bragging. What I'm trying to illustrate here is that there's a lot of stuff going on out there in the realm of alternative media, and I know that your time is valuable. Uh, but what I'm offering you is literally college and grad school level stuff for $4.95 a month and $60 a year. Who has taken you through all, almost all of the important works of Plato? Lecture by lecture by lecture by lecture. Every book of the Republic. Who's been giving you at least a dozen lectures on philosophy and metaphysics just in the last month or two months? So when you compare the body of work that we're putting out here, Exegesis of Texts, the book of Daniel, Defenses of the New Testament, Debates with Atheists, Debates with Thomists. When you compare this material, this body of work, to what else is out there, I'm not trying to be arrogant, but I'm trying to tell you, none of the stuff out there compares to what the quality of what I am giving you. And I hope you appreciate that. Because... I enjoy it. I enjoy doing this body of work that nobody else is covering. Who has covered CIA manuals? Who has covered Jacques Attali? Who's covered Ghosts in the Machine? All 300 page book. Who's covered 1,100 pages of Tragedy and Hope and the Anglo American establishment? Now people talk about it, but who covered it? In all 1,100 pages. So I'm not trying to be a D-bag. But as a person who reached out to me who had a managerial kind of government type of position who was interested in orthodoxy, asking questions... <clears throat> asked he said have you really read all these books and i said have you checked out the globalism books series he said no i haven't got to that yet i've just looked at some of the theological stuff i'm interested in orthodox theology this is not a spy it's just a person who had like a academic type of position managerial kind of, kind of position i said when you look at the globalism book series you will see that yes i've read all these books and yes, I'm covering material that other people aren't covering. I'm not saying people are intentionally covering it up. I'm saying nobody's reading all these books and giving you this information. And dum dums come on the channel and they harass and they tweet and they blah, blah, blah. And they haven't read any of this stuff. Not one bit of it. 
They've not read one book. They want to talk about so-and-so who believes this is a retard. So-and-so believes that's an idiot. They don't even know who Jonas Salk is. Much less have they read his two books. I've already given you lectures on Jonas Salk. So what I'm trying to say is this is a category of material and a body of work and content that's a step above. And I'm proud of that. I'm not bragging because all of the, the uh, abilities that I have, the gifts that I have, they're gifts. Uh, and it makes some people mad. I'm sorry for that. But I'm trying to put this out here and do a good thing. I'm trying to be positive. And I think, I think it is positive. A lot of people are benefiting from this. I mean, a lot of the stuff that people find distasteful or that they find problematic, uh, you could, we live in the world of the internet and Google. It would take you a minute, lazy bones, to Google and see if these books are real. If I'm accurately describing what's in the book, read the summary of the books. These are real books. They're not made up. As one Daily Beast writer said to me, you're making up the Jonas Salk book. You write for the Daily Beast and you think that I'm making up the Jonas Salk book? You are a fucking idiot. How did you get through your classes? How do you have a degree? <laughs> Let's talk about the philosophy of UNESCO. Now you say, keep a humble spirit and humble heart. I'm striving to, I'm trying to. Pray for me to keep a humble heart because so many dum-dums, day in and day out, it's just nonstop. What is the philosophy and purpose of UNESCO? And why is this such an important globalism textbook? Well, Let's consider that this guy in these same Royal Society circles of Bertrand Russell and everyone else that we've talked about many, many times in these talks is the father of the term transhumanism. He says, I believe in transhumanism. Once there are enough people who can truly say that the human species will be on the threshold of a new kind of existence as different from ours as ours is from that of Peking Man, a notorious fake, by the way. Peking Man is completely fake. It will at last be consciously fulfilling its true destiny. Julian Huxley, Bottles for New One. So we have the brother, the gay bro, G-H-E-Y, gay, just like P-H-A-T, fat, bro of Julian. I mean, of Aldous. So... We cover Brave New World. Basics. Everybody ought to know about that one. You read it in high school. I can't figure out if there's a Brave New World, even though in high school I had to read Brave New World. It's a, it's a fiction book, uh, dummy. It's a fiction book. <sighs> You're an idiot. So UNESCO is the cultural arm of propaganda for the United Nations. Uh, it's basic bitch 101 understanding of, of this realm of geopolitics that the Rockefellers and the Rockefeller Foundation is who donated the land for the United Nations. That's who helped set it up. It's in their authorized biography by, by Collier and Horowitz, entire chapters on the United Nations. Duh. It's, it's mainline history. Quigley covers it too. So in order, if you're going to have that, you got to control culture. What have we been talking about for a long time here? Culture creation, culture control. Yeah, that's what this book's about. And this is not just about America and controlling culture in America through Hollywood. This is global culture, controlling the culture globally through the United Nations propaganda arm known as UNESCO. So he begins by laying out the foundations of this idea. And he says, we're going to have to use propaganda. He says, this is a global control of culture. And we want to combat ignorance. <laughs> uh, and we want to combat ignorance with liberty, equality, and fraternity. 
Where have we heard that before? Oh, that's the Masonic dictum of the French Revolution. Oh, well, it just happens to be the dictum and basis uh, of the idea of UNESCO and also the revolutionary philosophy of the, the Enlightenment. That's because it's straight out of the Lodge. Uh, and he says that we want to combat liberty, equality, and fraternity against the idea of the inequality of men and races. Now, let's pay attention to that. The inequality of men and races because Julian's going to say a completely contradictory thing <laughs> as we move through the book concerning the inequality of races and the liberty, equality, fraternity Masonic dictum that he has. And this is going to prove to you, to the dum-dums that constantly tell me that the Huxleys are good guys, right? They're good because they were part of like the uh, hallucinogen revolution. They were doing LST, LSD, LSDMT before anybody, man. They were good, dude. <laughs> Even though Terrence McKenna says to not have babies and kill yourself for the earth. He's good, dude. <laughs> It's a lie. He's a liar. That's what's going on here. Julian Huxley and Aldous Huxley are shitty, elite, pseudo-elite liars. They hate you. And they say they hate you. Because guess what? There's going to be a whole section about dysgenics in this book. Now, you've heard me talk about that. You thought that was a dumb conspiracy theory. What's well, in this book? Morals, he says, are going to have to be combated with new morals. Every one of these guys, all the way back to Bertrand Russell and H.G. Wells, it's all, they all say the same thing. Once again, all of the basic Ten Commandment dogmas of globalism are all going to be present in this clown. He says we need to have greater control because we need to institute global collectivism. So the UNESCO organization will be the propaganda arm of the UN for culture. It will spread a weaponized culture within two pages, he's told us this, and it will attempt to control the arts globally. And not just to control the arts, one thing that's fascinating he says is that, yeah, you know, men need a tradition and they need a, a, a body of art and culture to pass down. He says, so one way that we can destroy people groups and nation states because this is actually a book against nation states uh is and now i'm not i'm not i don't have a problem criticizing the nation state we've talked about the byzantine symphonia many times but his reason for criticizing the nation state is not because he genuinely wants to have peace among men it's because he wants to radically depopulate the whole earth that's why and he says it in the book he says uh what we need to do is construct he actually says this construct a global culture. So the social engineers literally have the idea of since men like their people group and their nation state and their heritage, we need to obliterate that and create, construct one that's global. And then we can control the world. Blofeld, mad scientist, evil genius plot, except they're not that smart. Uh, these these people literally are not that smart. They act, people say Alex Jones says, oh, folks, they've got two hundred and seventy five thousand IQ. No, they don't. This guy can this guy contradicts himself within a few pages in this stupid book. They're not that smart. They recruit. They're crafty. They recruit people and steal people's inventions and ideas, but that doesn't make you smart. All right. So he goes on to say. Uh, the basics here is neutrality. Science is neutral. No, it's not. But that's the basis of this nonsense. Science, since science is neutral, we're going to approach the, the UNESCO organization and science and the arts from the vantage point of the assumption of scientific neutrality. And he says that history is a dialectic between the one and the many. Oh, wow. You've heard me say that, haven't you, many times? Yeah, but what's his solution? An atheistic humanistic resolution to the one of the many problem. So he says the religions are all, they've all failed because they're all particular. Buddhism, Islam, Roman Catholicism, Protestants, Unitarianism, Judaism, blah, 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 blah. They are all 
fragments of mankind's overall perspective on the beyond, on the perennial philosophy. Hey, wait a minute. What's that other book that Aldous wrote? The perennial philosophy. So the Masonic philosophy here and the, the perennial philosophy of, Jewel, of, of, of Aldous Huxley, it's the same idea. What was that pagan guy saying? There's a skeletal divine nature out, out, outlining basic principle behind all religions and they're all just masks that the gods wear. That's called Freemasonry, bro. And what's it based on? The false assumption of scientific neutrality. Why is that? Well, because of science. Because the only reliable way to have knowledge of the world is the scientific method. Really. Really. That can be critiqued in one minute. The scientific method cannot justify the scientific method. Therefore, it itself is a dogmatic religious presupposition. But, of course, Julian says, don't worry. I'm here to free you from dogma. This book is full of dogmas. But he's here to free you from dogmas. It reminds me of the language of Albert Pike in Morals and Dogma, where he says that the message of Masonry is freedom from all dogmas. Here's my 800-page book on the dogmas you must believe, by the way, under oath. <laughs> Double think. Mind control. Now he says races don't really matter, but guess what? Eugenics is true. And since eugenics is true... Uh, and since races don't really matter, the best way to approach this is not to pick one race. Now, how many times have I been telling you the Fabians have a different approach to this and the single triumphant race idea is that doesn't matter anymore. What they want to do is say we need to pick the top percentile from each race and kill everybody else. That's the plan. It's not exalt my, t my Teutonic knife, my Viking powers. I am Thor, <laughs> Loki Thor. <laughs> oh, you are being manipulated by a stupid, archaic revival primitivism that he says would come. He says promote primitivism, promote the archaic revival, indigenous cultures of all traditions. Promote that. Because that will actually turn people into dum-dums who can be manipulated. And as you saw from yesterday's debate, logic doesn't really work anymore, does it, when we go down that route? Uh, what's the basis of all this? Evolutionary progress. What is that defined as? An all income. What is evolution progress? Define evolution. Remember, this is supposed to be scientific. What is it? It is an all-encompassing perspective of everything under the ages, purview, and guise of evolutionary progress. Everything in life is part participating in evolutionary progress. Oh, except the ideas of everything participating in evolutionary progress. That itself is not part of evolutionary progress because that's our grounding assumption that we have to have. But uh, we'll give Julian the benefit of the doubt here. And so everything is part of flux and evolution. And therefore, we're moving to a world government. It's just naturally evolving that way. See? That's literally his argument. That's literally the argument here. Why is progress necessitating a global government? Because everything is going into a global government. Why is that progress? Because it's evolution. Why is that evolutionary progress? Because everything is moving to being global. The wheel of the horse goes round and round, round and round. Fallacies are just things that people make up. They're not real. That's why you're a retard. Because you think fallacies aren't real. If fallacies aren't real, you can't reason. What is the definition of evolution? It is a broad sense in which every historical process and everything in history is part of change. Uh, we're going to talk about change. Uh, change. Uh, everything's under change. Uh, everything's changing. Just believe in change. Rock H. Obama said, believe in change. Yeah. Slogans for the dum-dums. What is the purpose of UNESCO in promoting the evolutionary humanistic philosophy? That's what he titles it. It's the evolutionary philosophy of secular humanism. And what is that? 
Well, it's first and foremost population control. <laughs> it's a shocker. Shocker. Surprise. Uh, and who makes up the elite in this perspective here? Why it's all the people in his circles. The Royal Society. Shocker again, right? <laughs> and what is the purpose of this? Well, to inculcate a new religion, essentially. Even though it's neutral and science, it's a new religion that's open to new age be beliefs, to spirituality. But a spirituality that's not dogmatic. Well, is it a dogma that the new age spirituality of the UN and Julian Huxley is non-dogmatic? Yes. Is that a contradiction? No. Why? Because logical laws and fallacies are just things that people bring out of their hat, man. They just bring it out of their ass, man. Raise your IQs. You're too low IQ. All you low IQ people, raise your IQs now. Raise them. Meditate. Raise, raise IQ now. What is evolution? It's a cumulative conscious process. Oh. Whoa, Terrence McKenna here. And by the way, these guys were tripping acid before anybody else was tripping acid, right? It was Tavistock guys, Huxley, Hollywood people. They were hanging out with Hollywood people, and they were tripping acid before the hippies were. So this guy was like, you know, tripping, man, tripping balls, dog. So, so shocker, he came to the, revel the revelation. Whoa, shocker that all things are one and everything's moving towards one and we're all just having an evolutionary process, man. Why do you think these idiots all come to the same philosophy if it's not inspired by the same spirit? It is, obviously. And they talk about, like, aliens and occult beings. He doesn't talk about aliens in this. Oh, by the way, the UN is very open to aliens and entities, of course. Well, what is evolution? Again, can you please define this thing? Because it's so elastic. Uh, we saw in the analyses of Bertrand Russell, it's used in like 50,000 different ways uh, that we don't actually have a real definition of what evolutionary evolution. Oh, it's just change in development. So anything that changes and develops is evolution? Yeah, 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 man. <laughs> what does it mean? Oh, the, uh, he says tools. The fact that tools came to be. So the existence of a tool. So in other words, this is... <laughs> This is like the most extreme version of confirmation bias where everything that exists confirms the theory of evolution. The existence of a, the rising of a tool is proof of evolution. Biology and mutations are proofs of evolution, even though there's all kinds of mutations that are not beneficial. Like half of a PP, millions of years of half of a PP. What is that? How is that beneficial? Oh, and then it develops into the PP. And then, and then that just happens to be the vagina that develops. How, how are those mutations? How is a fourth of an eye beneficial? Oh, that's not right, of course. But we don't have to worry about that right now because the real proof of evolution is everything. Because everything is evolution, you see. Just total nonsense. Literal, total New Age nonsense that if anybody else was saying this, would be laughed at. If I were to come on here and say, my view is proved by everything and everything moving, you would be like, who the F is this idiot? He's an idiot. But when guys with authority, officials from the UN, from the Royal Society, from the families of the elite, when they say it, oh, well, throw out the logic. He said it. He's important. He's an important man. He's got business suit on. He's important. What do we need to do? Speed up evolution. Exactly. I told you that. I told you because Birch and Russell, Kessler, Ghost and the Machine, they said we got to grasp evolution and apply pressure from above and pressure from below. Speed up the evolutionary process to cause a jump. And then we'll, we'll leap into the transhuman future. Not any of you dum-dums out there, by the way. You're, you're all the dum-dums that believe this is for you. No, no, no. Us and our families. That's who it's for. In, in their mind. He says we need to enact controlled eugenics right now. This is the most pressing, most important issue. And everybody's got to die. 
literally everybody except for like the top few percentile. Why? Because if we don't, what do they all say? What do we see in all the other books, the globalism book series books? If we don't stop the low IQ people, we're all going to die. We're all going to be nuked. <laughs> we're all going to have a cataclysm. Gaia is going to attack us. Mother Earth is going to attack us because we have let the species grow too populous. Even though there's no God, Gaia is going to somehow do this because Gaia is like a, a, a being with intention and will and thought, uh, even though it's not, but it, but it is. Right. Okay, yeah. It's a personalism sort of assumption there. Well, Hegel is a good guy that we could look at, he says, because Hegel showed us that everything is just in process, man. It's just an evolutionary process. Process philosophy. How many times have I told you that it's the guiding philosophy of these guys? Because it's just another version of this kind of evolutionary nonsense where nothing is fixed, everything is evolving. And he says, yeah, and ultimately we're going to get the machinification of everything. Uh, and that will lead to the rise of the bots, the rise of the machines, and then we'll have stricter population control. But we can't say this to everybody because they're not going to accept it. So this was written in 1946. Okay, so that's part of the reason why he says, he says, when I tell you the eugenics, dysgenic stuff, most people aren't going to be able to accept this. However, you further smart people, elites that are reading this, uh, you're going to understand that most nations will not accept this. Um, so, uh, but we got to kill pretty much everybody. But don't worry, because we are going to, over generations, he says, propagandize people to accept it. And here we are with giant parades and celebrations for killing offspring. This is literally what he said would happen. He said, we will use all of our media, mass communications, arms, arts, toxic culture, promote the filth, and then we'll get our desired result. And here we are. It's all here. They all write books about it. Nobody can figure out what's going on. The world's crazy. What's going on? I don't know what's happening. They all write fucking books about it, telling you what's happening. Makes me mad. Mm, start getting mad when I think about it. And the people that come up, oh, argue all day with me about this stuff when there's 50 fucking books about it that are all public. It makes me mad. I get tingles. I get mad. And you want to argue with me about it. World government must come to be in order to enforce these plans. Could it be any clearer for you? Can I make this clearer for you? Page 13. A world government must come to be to enforce all of these plans. Namely, killing everybody. Why? Because divisions are bad, man. Break down the borders, break down the walls, and build Babel. Quite literally, build Babel. The World Health Organization will be central in this. And we'll end war. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah, we'll end war. Okay. How are you going to end war? By killing everybody. <laughs> I'm, I'm not joking. I mean, that's literally his mindset because these people are Luciferian. They're, they're satanic. They literally think that everyone will die and should die except for the top 1% to 2%. It's not down to 500 million. It's very few people, actually, is the real, real thing. And he says, how do we know this? Because we're all made of stars, man, and we're, uh, we're evolving to godhood. Literal 2001 philosophy is what he says. He says, we are all made of stars. Crowley. Aleister Crowley stuff. We are all made of stars. Moby stuff. What does all this mean? Uh, evolution has taken us to a point where we need to get down to an optimal population. He doesn't tell you what the optimal population number is, though. Because it's very small. He says... Now, this is an interesting section where he says some of the stuff you hear me say, which is about the issues of the one and the many, and he says that both uh, a radical collectivism and a radical individualism are wrong. He says there needs to be a balance between the one and the many. Oh, okay, yeah. Do we do that through God? No, of course not, because we don't know anything about God. There's some kind of vague, general, New Age oneness, but there's not any God that you can know about. Uh, rather, what we have is scientism. Literally, he's a complete proponent of scientism. 
This shows, by the way, that all the scientists and proponents are really just phony front men for an actual Luciferian cult at the top. They're not believers in actual scientism. He says they believe in transhumanism. It's, it's literally a religion, a Gnostic Luciferian religion. And he says uh, that your personhood does not come to you on the basis of being created in the image of God. He says that your rights as being a person, he says we should look to Hegel here and the idea of the philosophy of right and the radical statism of Hegel. He says actually Hegel is actually right, uh, that your personhood comes to you on the basis of your usefulness to the collective. So babies aren't persons because they're not useful to the collective, you see. And what is this ultimately? He says this whole philosophy is the unification of all opposites. What? Well, that's alchemy. Yeah, because he's into the occult. And he says that. He says when we're going to construct a unified tradition of all the religions, he says it's basically perennialism. My brother wrote a book on it. Can you figure that out? And if we can figure out a way to give everybody mammons, they'll go right into this system. A universal basic income, a credit system. Yeah, because Bertrand Russell, his butt buddy, said that before he did. Because they're in the same crew who planned the world. Then he says, yeah, I talked a lot about equality, but we know, we're not, we know everybody's not equal. <laughs> uh, we're going to have this bullshit facade of liberty, equality, fraternity, but we know not everybody's equal. He says, but not everybody can handle that. So what we're going to do is have a secret plan. He says this. He says it's going to be keep it kind of on the DL that not everybody can handle this idea of the mass depopulation and dysgenics. Oh, page 21 is all about dysgenics and central planning. He says, so what we got to do instead is spend the next several decades re-educating people for this radical eugenic plan. And then we'll institute central planning and everybody will tell you what your job is. Central planning on the basis of your genetics is going to tell you what your gifts and your job is. You're not going to do what you want to do. You're not going to grow up and become a fireman or whatever because most of you will not go into the future. That's what this plan is. 95%. 98%, 99% in this view are not going to go into the future. You're not going to inherit the earth in their view. Now, he makes this interesting statement. He doesn't come out and say this, but I think that's what he means. He says, civilization has the effect of de causing a bunch of degeneracy. Uh, now, he's talking about weaponized culture and civilization. He says, we know that when we do this, it brings a lot of degeneracy. And he says, so what we're going to do <laughs> is civilize the whole world. This is the mission of UNESCO, to civilize the whole world. It's to take toxic culture to the whole world. Now, it has this facade of we're going to preserve uh, the big fat Buddha statue over here under the World Heritage site. And we're going to preserve this thing over here for the World Heritage. That's not for you. That's the World Heritage of the top 1% to inherit while you die. That's what it means. That's what he says it means. It's basically saying this elite group is going to have all of these great treasures. It's for them, not you. That's what that means. When you see UNESCO World Heritage Site, interpret and understand that what Julian Huxley is telling you is that in the future that will be ours, you won't go into the future. That's what it means. We will control the arts. We will control the culture globally. We will control city planning globally. And he says that's the focus of UNESCO. Uh, now, the other stuff, he says, nutrition, agriculture, medicine, health, the other entities at the UN, 
Uh, if the UN works, if it succeeds, he says they'll control all that. Uh, what we're going to control in, under UNESCO is the arts. And the arts are crucial because the arts are the means by which, just like Hollywood, the means by which we initiate the masses into the cult of the dum-dum, the babble cult of the dum-dum to kill you all. How? Through FEMA camps? No. No, no, no. Through you accepting the culture of death. Through you accepting euthanasia and abortion and the toxic food and not being smart enough to figure out that it's a plan. How are we going to do it? Public schools. Public schools will be all linked to the UN and they're all going to teach this degeneracy and now they all teach this degeneracy directly from the UN. Civilization has a dysgenic effect. Civilize everyone. Do you see his thought process? Do you see the logical flow here? Since civilization, and by that he means this stuff, has a degenerative effect, a dysgenic effect, then we need to civilize everyone. That's the purpose of UNESCO, to bring culture and civilization to everyone. What does that actually mean? Oh, it means vaccines. It means abortions. That's what it means. And total degeneracy. In this system, UNESCO will set universal education standards. <laughs> uh, genetics will determine from birth what babies will study. And your degree will be determined from birth. From birth? That's why his brother wrote Brave New World. Now, you say, the idiots who have told me over the years, Brave New World was an expose because he's a good guy. Here's his brother saying that it's not an expose. It's the plan. Brave New World is this right here. Too many gifted kids are wasted, and so they need to be brought into this plan. Public relations is crucial because it's going to be the propaganda arm of UNESCO. Because the scientific method is the only reliable source of information, the root re religion here is going to be scientism. He literally teaches a dogma of scientism. And what is the dogma of scientism? It is that everything is relative. There's no more truths. And he's literally too stupid to figure out, too blinded to realize that that's a dogma that claims to be a universal truth. It's really that low IQ. Who are key guys? Freud and Jung. Freud and Jung. He thinks Freud and Jung are science. Now, what about the occult? Is that... Super, no, no, no. The occult is good, he says, actually. Uh, we should encourage indigenous tribal principles. Encourage parapsychology and precognition. Why does he say that? Mysticism? Because he wants to have a global New Age cult. That's why. And all the other idiot pagan cults can all merge perfectly into this. That's fine. You can have your pagan cult where you imbibe the energies of Lucifer or whatever you think you're getting. You can have all that. Just merge with this cult. Babel. He says, I'm all for mystical experiences. He says, but regardless, all that stuff doesn't matter. This is page 37. He says, the main thing that matters the most is to ensure that eugenics is taught and known as dogma. Now, does he mean that the Anglo-Saxon British elite are the people that need to go into the future? Is he a racialist eugenicist in the sense that he wants to preserve the Teutonic Knights? Does he want to preserve some... Uh, no. He wants the top few percentile of every people group, because that's scientific, right? He actually says, he says, we don't need to eradicate whole people groups. People groups should be studied on the basis of science. Right? We want to know what has been, what has come to be, what's existed. If a species has died out, he's basically saying, in the past, an animal species, that was a travesty for science. We can't study that species. So we want all the species to survive. Why? Because of science. That's why. We want to study black people. We want to study Asians. We want to study all these people. So we want to have, But we want to have the highest quality people. Who's that? The highest IQs. 
like you worship. Now he does say maybe some other people could make in, make the cut if you've got some gifts, talents. Uh, but now here's the big flaw in all this. Who's going to decide who lives and dies? Oh, they will. There's going to be a global committee, death panels, etc. And they'll decide who makes the cut. This is a dystopia. This is a complete nightmare dystopia. This is beyond Nazi Germany. This is beyond all that stuff that everybody talks about. This is the next level beyond all that. He says the sciences don't have values, so we got to figure out a way to come up with values for science. Um, but we don't really know what that is because everything's evolving. So he says, why don't we just try to return to some kind of intuitive thing like shamanistic primitivist religions? What? You mean the top elite demonic guy is saying return to your primitive, archaic, pagan, revivalist tribes and cults? Yes. Why? Because that's intimately connected to MK Ultra, which he's a part of. He and his bro are in the UK branch of MKUltra. It's the same program. We need LSD and shamans, man. We need to smoke some more Joe Rogan, bro. And then he says we'll come up with a new humanity. I'm sorry, not just a new humanity, but a humanities. When we create a new, in the sense of the, the liberal arts, the humanities. He says, when we create a new body of canon of literature, canon of globe, not the canon of Western literature, of civilization, but the canon of a global literature, global humanities, that will be the initiatory indoctrination for you into this cult. He says, then we can start to move humanity into tra transhumanism. And literally create, in his mind, a new humanity, right? The quote at the beginning of the talk. Uh, he says, "What we're, and how do we do that? Well, one thing that we do is we don't just study ancient civilizations that the West studies, like the Greeks and the Romans and the church fathers, uh, because that's too much logic <laughs> and reasoning. You've got to balance this out with a lot of uh, Far Eastern gobbledygook, like that everything is nonsense right this kind of stuff he says so import far eastern beetles import beetles and far eastern hindu crap and what did two days ago what did our pagan guy who thinks he's got it figured out that pagan guy he's just a tool of this guy and he doesn't even know it this guy in the 1940s said the archaic revival, primitivism, the return to tribalism, return to animism, indigenous traditions. It's all part of this plan. You're not reacting. You're, you're reacting on the basis of emotion to actual problems and being led into a dumb cult that they know every they know good and well what it is. You think the system is, you think they're not aware of the rise of your neo-pagan cult? He's saying in the 1940s it's going to come. And you're not one of the elite because you are in some dumb pagan cult. You're one of the people he wants to die because he wants everybody to die. <laughs> These people are complete psychopaths. Don't you get that? Psychopaths lie. Have you figured that out? Like they don't tell you the truth. or they write a book, it's not to help you out. <laughs> <They're>, they lie. <laughs> Evolution of morals he says, is a good thing because if we inculcate enough through public education of the idea of everything evolving, he says, we'll have people indoctrinated into relativism. This is what he says on page 45. And he says, once they've, once they've adopted relativism and once we've broken down their language, literally, uh, he says, then they're perfect tools to mold them as the giant uh, silly putty group of people into the global blob. What do we need to run this whole system? Technocracy. Giant AI technocracy is the only way that we can have enough eyes and bureaucracy controlling all this. 
Otherwise, it's not going to work because the world's too big, too many people. We've got too much junk. So he says what we need to do, point out, he says, ugly cities, ugly areas. This gives people the impression that uh, the pro which are real problems, right? And those real problems, problem, reaction, solution, he says, then we can come along and say, oh, let us uh, UN come in and take over your area and we'll, we'll, we'll spruce it up and we'll make it a World Heritage Site because it'll be for us and our descendants and we will toxify your culture and you and your descendants can all die out. That's what he says. Man's problem is education, he says. No, it's not. Man's problem is sin. Moral flaw, not an epistemic flaw. He says we need to create a global arts culture and global cultural relativism. Then, when everybody's been initiated into the retard religion of cultural relativism, they are putty in our hands. And this was a key point here. Let me see what my note was on page 53. No scientific... Oh, oh, oh. So, by the way, so here's the irony here. Everything he's saying is the way to to preserve high culture and the best of cultures and art. But he says cultural relativism is true. So how do you know what the best and the highest and the elite cultures and artworks are? You don't. Right. So basic bitch level contradiction. So there's no science. There's no scientific atheistic or humanistic basis to judge cultures as to whether they're high or low. However, this whole book is about the preservation of high culture on an atheistic basis, supposedly. Uh, what are we going to do? We're going to meld everybody into one, once again, he says. Uh, and he says that you and your artwork, if you're an artist, what you got to understand going into the future is that we're going to have artists, but your artwork is not yours. Your artwork is there to serve the globe you're a world citizen and that means your artwork it's not for you it's not out of your head it's in service to humanity and you're going your artwork will serve humanity in other words your artwork is ours we the elite in our minds we say we how are we the elite well we say we're the elite your artwork is ours <laughs> how are we else are we going to what other tools can we use uh libraries and universities throughout the world will be tools of the new world order shocker libraries and universities and museums libraries museums universities will be the tools of UNESCO for propagating a bunch of nonsense. And yeah, he says a lot of it is nonsense. For example, we're going to have to give everybody the ruse of democracy because we're going to kill them all through soft kill. Uh, we did whole talks, me and John and Chris, old shows about museums being propaganda. Museums aren't there to preserve uh, some dusty, fake-ass-looking Paleolithic man. That's not real. Museums are there to indoctrinate you. They're propaganda, dummy. And there have been whole academic treatises written on the fact that museums are propaganda. <laughs> They're not there to ed educate you. Stop being naive. They are part of the control of arts. And this book is saying that globally, the arts, museums, libraries must be integrated into arms of control and they will have to censor and remove texts, alter texts. This is why you want to own actual physical books because even ever since the Dr. Day talks, Dr. Day says, we are going to literally go out. He's saying what the other doctors, uh, doc, the doctor in the, giving the talks is relaying Dr. Day's talk. And he says, uh, we're actually going to go and pull books from libraries. 
you're not going to be reading certain books. I wonder why the church fathers are so hard to, I mean, there's Amazon, right? But uh, before Amazon came along, do you know how hard it was to, to get a hold of like church, church fathers? We had to find like a Christian catalog and it was like $600, $800 to buy the writings of the church fathers back in the nineties when I first got the set. I remember the, the church father set was a thousand dollars. I thought, how am I ever going to buy the church father set? And then magically one day it went down to 350 and I took my Christmas money and I bought the church father set back in, I don't know, 1999 or 2000, somewhere in there, uh, maybe 2001. But he's literally saying the same thing that Dr. Day says. If you haven't heard the Dr. Day talks, go listen to them. They're, they're must. The Day tapes, the Dr. Day tapes. There's three parts to it. He says uh, they're going to pull everything from libraries. And when we go into the future, when books, by the way, have you noticed that bookstores are going away? When the bookstores go away, they're going to go away. Because books are going to be for the elite, not for you. Uh, you're going to have this nonsense Kindle crap. And it's all going to be edited. And you won't be able to buy the books. They're already calling for the banning of TV shows from 20 years ago. Do you think they're going to allow books from 100 years ago? Of course not. And he says that. Now, there will be books. But they're going to be in libraries for these people. Because in their mind, they appreciate it. You don't. That's why you want to have books. Somebody was asking me the other day, why do you have so many books? Fahrenheit 451, bro. Amazingly, on page 60, shocker, he, he quotes Lenin. V.I. Lenin is a great hero of this Luciferian order. So sh big surprise there, right? Uh, and he says we need to utilize the methods of Lenin for global propaganda. He says, one overlooked tool is documentaries. Yeah. What's, what's Alan Watt always saying? Documentaries. Don't you know? The big boys. The big boys use documentaries. Of course they do. He says right here they do. Now, I'm not saying all documentaries are fake, or, fake or, or they're not all propaganda, but he's saying that all of these means are going to be used to promote this nonsense. He says, if we can ever get to the point where everybody has a minimum basic, basic uh, provided income, physical welfare, he says, then we've got it. Because if you don't go along, they'll shut your credits off. <laughs> that's what he says. Now, I mean, he doesn't say the credits part. That's from Bertrand Russell. But his BFF, his butt buddy's Bertrand Russell, and that's what he says. And that's what he's talking about here. So universal basic income, the social credits, blah, blah, blah. He says, all of this is just to merge everything into a giant blob, which is the perennial philosophy, the book by Aldous Huxley. And he says, what's the real, can you guess, what's, who's the real enemy? I'm going to, can you guess who's standing in the way to this? It's Christianity and it's dogmas. Big shocker. Big shocker. Religious dogma, Christian dogma is the stumbling block to this great babel that they're going to build because it believes in absolute morals and absolute ethics and absolute metaphysical principles. But he says, that's not evolutionary. We've evolved past that, and it's not practical. He says, we need the reconciliation of all opposites. That's Crowleyanism, and that's alchemy. So, that's the first half of the talk. Uh, since that's a short essay... What we're going to do is part two is going to be an investigation into this more in-depth book on living in a revolution. What revolution is he talking about? The French Revolution? No. He's talking about living through the final revolution, the rise of the transhumanist technocracy. The proof of everything that we're going through. Completely satanic plan. Openly so. He even says it's an alchemical process. Reconciliation of all opposites into a giant blob that the elite can manipulate Babel the reinstitution of Babel so on living in a revolution is what we'll do now this is a, a good sized book so what we may do is split this up into two talks so I might do the first half of this book for the subscribers which will be part two of this talk that we're doing right now and then I'll introduce a new talk split into two on the second half of the book so but, I, but obviously this essay was uh, only 60 pages in this book. So 
we want to have material for the subscribers, and that'll be the book. The book book on living in a revolution. So, uh, yeah, other books, people are talking about the first global revolution. Yeah, that's by the Club of Rome, and that's about uh, uh, the whole green scam. Which, in which book they say, uh, we need to invent a thing, uh, climate change and pollu or pollution is what they say. We need to invent a thing, pollution, and that's going to be the unifying basis. Uh, that's com he completely says that. It's all, it's all the same people. The same people at the Club of Rome making that stuff up. It's these people, right? All right, let's read some Super Chats because I've had a long day. $10. No one else, nobody. Thank you, Nepco. You appreciate the fact that uh, nobody else is really diving into book by 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 book. From the top of the pyramid. Grace Asher, five dollars. You think the Tower of Babel story is God's work? Yeah, of course. That's what I'm saying. They want to build Babel. Uh, they want to bring back the Tower of Babel. Uh, the Tower of Babel is the insignia of the EU. It's their symbol. I believe it's anti-globalism scripture with reason behind it. Uh, uh, it's the anti-globalism scripture. I'm not sure. I mean, Pentecost is intended to be the reversal of Babel. So the real unity that we're all seeking is what's in the church. Gabriel R, $5, best channel on YouTube. Thank you. Appreciate that, Gabriel. Uh, honored that, that you would listen and support. Perrin Lance, $10, 100% support the Globalism Book Series. Consider reading Aberration in the Heartland of the Real, The Secret Life of Timothy McVeigh. Wendy painting it blew my mind. Uh, yeah, I mean, I'm, I imagine that probably has, what, the same type of stuff that's in Corbett's docu Corbett's documentary, by the way, if you want a good analysis of, like, false flag black op type stuff. Watch uh, Corbett's video. It's had, like, a million views on uh, Timothy McVeigh and black ops. Uh, but I haven't read Wendy painting's book, but um, it's probably saying the same thing. HSAP, uh, $5. Love your stuff, Jay. Also, if you're tired of shill tunes follow my band at pilgrim star band on instagram shill tunes itunes shill tunes uh okay well we'll check out that on instagram at pilgrim star band new album coming soon this summer shameless plug okay appreciate that no no problem with uh, music plugs here john j 20 bucks thank you john appreciate your work get yourself on an owen benjamin stream it's not up to me who has me on what stream. You two would be spectacular together. Um, yeah. I mean, he knows I exist. Uh, it's, it's up to him. Rob James, 10 bucks. Uh, go buy yourself a beer. I uh, don't drink beer, but thank you. I quit drinking many years ago. Haven't had a drop of alcohol in many years. Uh, I have absolutely no desire for alcohol. Can't stand it. I had enough alcohol in my 20s. Uh, pretty much messed up my gut, so I'm still fixing my gut from years of alcohol. So, no, won't be getting a beer. But thank you for the $10, Rob James. Appreciate it. Nick Jones, 10 bucks. Can't hang out very late. I'll watch the rest tomorrow. Before leaving, however, I want to express my support and gratitude. Thanks always. Thank you, Nick. Much appreciation for that 10 bucks. I know you've you've been here for a pretty good spate for a long haul. I remember the name. I remember the Super Chats, and they're very much appreciated exodus 580 20 dollars word up what should orthodox churches in the states do to have an impact on their local government politically against liberalism and globalism i don't think they need to even worry about local government because they need to fix their own problems in their own house before they try to worry about the problems out there and so orthodoxy has a multitude of problems in america in its own house so they need to worry about that they need to figure out if they even believe the Bible before they try to go off and fix the government. So that's at the end of the problem list. That's not at the top of the problem list. But I thank you for that 20 bucks, and I thank you for your thoughtfulness there. Um, but there's no point in fighting globalism and liberalism when we don't even believe that the Bible records the actual events in history. I mean, it's just, what's the point of this religion at all? It's just a social club. It's a tool for the government. Right, they need to figure that out first before uh, trying to get into this other political nonsense. And by the way, politics is a waste of time. Evan Schultz, thirty bucks. I look forward to your discourse on Genesis creation, early man. Might you consider critiquing orthodoxy? Critiquing orthodoxy. I, I did a talk on orthodoxy and religion in the future. Uh, there's a two-part talk, uh, so 
I'm not going to, I wouldn't critique it. I think it's a great book. Um, but thank you for that. Much appreciated, Evan. Longtime supporter. And yes, there will be a series of lectures on Genesis Creation and Early Man. But uh, just type in Orthodoxy and the Religion of the Future, J. Dyer, and you'll get, the, it's had like 20,000 views. So uh, definitely should check that out if you haven't heard that. Marco Kalibic, 750. Are the prophecies of Russian saints regarding the end times authentic? Uh, I don't know. I'm not sure. I mean, I've read some of these. I don't know what specifically the prophecy of St. Seraphim of Sarov's end times prophecy is. Um, I think that we should look at them with an open mind. Uh, St. John of Kronstadt's vision uh, does seem to predict a lot of things in the 20th century, like clown masses and all this kind of nonsense. Uh, so, you know, we talked about that. In the nihilism talk, um, but I'm not familiar with the specific vision of Saint Seraphim of Seraph. So uh, I think that we can be open to that. But uh, again, those are private private uh, revelations, you could say, or beliefs. Uh, they're certainly not on the same level as rev uh, as revealed dogma. In fact, even in the liturgy of what what day was it when we had that liturgy? Was it the Sunday of Orthodoxy? I think the Sunday of Orthodoxy liturgy reads even that we accept the writings of the Holy Fathers, the Church Fathers, when they are in accord with divine revelation. So even the councils, even any of it, Origen, right? Because somebody said, well, Origen was a Church Father. Yeah, but we accept these people when they're in accord with divine revelation. So for us, there's not a dialectic. We're not Protestants when we say that, because if the Church Fathers teach something true, uh, and it's in accord with divine revelation, that's not in contrast it's in perfect harmony. Gay, gay, guy, gay incognito, guy incognito, $5. Any recommendations for reading on soldiers venerated by the church? Uh, honestly, no, I don't, I don't know a specific thing on that. I mean, I mean, Metropolitan Philorette would bless the army and, and all that. But I mean, you uh, read about the Serbian kings, right? I mean, they, like the history of, of Serbia, they have kings that were saints. Uh, Ameridox people, Normidox, they don't even, that's like, they don't even, they read it in the liturgy. We, we praise the Orthodox kings and queens and saints, and then they turn around and think that uh, all these enlightenment principles are what God wants. I mean, this is total double thing. All right. Uh, thank you guys. Uh, I'm getting kind of tired. Uh, one, one hour, that's not bad. Uh, really appreciate your support. I think it was a good chat, um, but yeah, I'm kind of winding down now. So God bless you all, and uh, stay tuned. It may be a couple days before we get part one. Well, the second half of this will be part one of On Living in a Revolution. Give me a few days to put that up. So I've been doing a lot of stuff lately. Have a good night. God bless.